Hello, everyone, and welcome to OHSA Interviews. I'm Vincenzo Calla, and I'm your host for today's episode. Today, I'm happy to have with me a CPC leadership candidate and the MPP for York Center, Roman Baber. Roman was elected to become the MPP for York Center in the 2018 provincial election. Roman obtained a BA from York University and graduated from law school at the University of Western Ontario. He was called to the Ontario Bar in 2006 and practiced civil and commercial litigation until his election 2018. Roman is an occasional lecturer at an after school program engaging high school students on constitutional and criminal law topics. Thank you, Roman, for your time and thank you for joining us today. Good to be with you. It's great to have you. And we're gonna start off our interview with the question and answer segment. These questions are asked by the members of our high school team. So the first one is a little simple, just sort of reflecting on your time so far as an MPP. And it is what skills do you think, well, what skills have you developed as an MPP that will help you in this leadership race? Absolutely. Well, look, I'm running to restore Canada's democracy opportunity, and most importantly, trust in government that many Canadians are losing faith in government. There's so much information out there. Uh, no one believes anyone anymore. No one believes anything anymore. Uh, I stood up for Canadians when it was popular, and I will continue to do so until we restore all rights for all Canadians. And I've demonstrated to say what I believe and do what I believe is right. And that is the most important quality I've harvested as an MPP and will bring to the leadership of the Conservative Party. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I think that especially you have been an elected official uh, for, I guess, four years now. So, so you sort of have that that understanding of how things work. And obviously, uh, provincial government isn't too, uh, in terms of the structure of it, isn't too, um, isn't too different from federal government, I guess, in terms of structure of things. So, so that's definitely, obviously, you know, parliamentary procedures. So that's something important to know as a, as a, as a potential leader candidate. And um, also, uh, we're going to go into the next question, actually. Um, so Vasu from Ajax wants to ask you uh, a big question. And this race is getting pretty big now. I think at my last count, we're at eight candidates now, um, eight, well, approved candidates. Uh, so he wants to ask, what makes you different from all the other candidates in this leadership race? And how will you convince the members of that? And even how would you convince them that you are the best choice out of all eight so far? Yeah, well, look, uh, and it also is consistent with your first question. I'm not a career politician, and that's a good thing. Uh, I like being the underdog, uh, but we consistently beat expectations. Uh, there's a lot of excitement around our campaign. Uh, the democracy message, my democracy message is resonating with Canadians. Uh, I'm an authentic everyday Canadian who's concerned by the erosion of our rights and freedoms. Um, I come from humble beginnings. Um, my family came to Canada. Uh, we were, uh, we didn't have a cent to our name, but I've been blessed by Canadian opportunity uh, to work, to succeed, to be elected by the very community that welcomed me as a new Canadian. Um, I love my country very much. And I've demonstrated leadership and courage to stand up for Canadians when it was unpopular, and I'll continue to do so. I'm very excited, uh, and many Canadians are excited by the success of our campaign. Yeah, and I mean, I also, uh, maybe adding on to what Vasu says, there have been a couple of other candidates as well who have similar sort of uh, beliefs in terms of you, in terms of like, um, in terms of respecting and enforcing uh, freedom for all Canadians and that sort of thing. What makes you maybe different from the others who have similar messaging compared to you on that topic, maybe? Well, look, when, when it comes to other candidates in the race, Vincenzo, I'd say to you that every single one of them would make a better prime minister than Justin Trudeau. Um, but I, I guess if I was to distinguish myself, I'd say that uh, I stood up for Canadians uh, when it wasn't popular. In January 2021, the environment uh, of the lockdown we're experiencing at the time was such that uh, no one would dare to question the mainstream narrative and potentially oppose government. And I've demonstrated courage to uh, oppose my very own government at a personal risk to myself because I believe that Canadians are expecting us to put them first before our political aspirations. 
and uh, stand up for those that don't have a voice. And, and that I think is the very distinguishing uh, factor between myself uh, and, and the balance of the candidates and the rest in that I am prepared uh, to say what may be unpopular, but necessary nonetheless. And uh, I'm not afraid to stand up to ideology and cancel culture that seems to have been so prevalent in the last couple of years in stifling dissenting voices. Right. I mean, that's definitely, I think cancel culture really is something that, um, I mean, we see it every day. We see it with famous people who one day, I mean, the cancel culture movement started out as sort of an awareness campaign, I guess, if you could call it. And it has transformed into something so much more than that, so much worse, I guess, that it's become if you disagree with someone, you're canceled. And if someone disagrees with you, yeah, you're canceled. So I think that that's something that's, uh, I, I, it's important to to sort of recognize and and probably something that shouldn't be happening in a free government where, well, in a government where disagreement happens, especially in uh, partisanship natures of today. So then, the, yeah. Know, the, the diversity, I, I would say the chance of diversity of opinion is not just important for our democracy and our right to articulate uh, a varying opinion. You know, what happened to our right to disagree uh, or our right to be wrong, but defending each other's right to say it. But beyond that, uh, expression of opinion is not just important for democracy. It's also good for public policy. We wanna consider the full spectrum of opinions. We wanna consider what are the varying baselines and, and then perhaps come up with something more sensible when we have more input. So it's not just good for our democracy, it's also good for our public policy. Definitely, and we're gonna go on to the next question, which really ties in really well with what we were just talking about. So as you know, uh, the Conservative Party of Canada is a massive party. It uh, started off in the, the current party started off in the, the early 2000s when there was the Unite the Right movement, when there was a couple of different parties and they were all joined together as one. And we're often seen as a big tent party, a party with lots of varying opinion. And uh, there are lots of different types of conservatives. There's, uh, well, we seem to use labels, I guess, on different types of conservatives. There's more fiscally conservative, social conservatives, uh, those sorts of things, different types of conservatives all together in one tent. But we've seen over the past couple of years, especially during COVID, as things have sort of been exposed more, that the party isn't always united. So um, I wanted to ask you, how would you keep the CPC caucus united uh, if you were to be chosen as leader? Absolutely, Vincenzo. I think that I bring a unique perspective in that um, I was unable to enjoy parliamentary democracy within my own party. And so the answer to your question is respecting democracy and respecting differing views within the Conservative Party of Canada. Uh, I'm running on restoring Canada's democracy and you can't restore Canada's democracy without restoring democracy within the Conservative Party of Canada. And so I will welcome all views and entertain all opinion uh, to, to help uh, not just the democratic process, but to inform the decision-making of our party. For instance, uh, I will welcome a lot of uh, voters back who did not vote for the Conservative Party of Canada by suggesting that uh, we should have stood up for you uh, against lockdowns, against passports, uh, against the mental health pandemic perpetuated by government in the last couple of years. And so I will welcome a lot of conservatives back. I will uh, welcome social conservatives by saying that even though we might sometimes disagree on some issues and that uh, I'm not sure if government has a role in uh, how people start and grow a family, I will nonetheless uh, welcome uh, their participation in the process. I will never have a litmus test in that I would deny uh, a candidate from contesting a nomination. Uh, everyone should be able to contest a nomination irrespective of their um, conscience and, and deeply held views. And I would never prevent anyone from introducing legislation. That is their sacred parliamentary right uh, they haven't been elected uh, to serve the leader. They've been elected by their constituents. And finally, I will appeal to Western conservatives, just like to all Western Canadians, by welcoming the West into the conversation and with a very robust energy plan. So, Vincenzo, I am determined to unite this party, but by restoring democracy within the Conservative Party of Canada. Three votes? Yes or no? <laughs> On matters of conscience, yes. Yeah. Uh, I have been forced throughout my career to vote against my conscience, and that is not something that I would ever impose on any uh, member of parliament.
even if it comes at a cost to myself uh, politically, we have to either we live by democracy or we do not. And, and I choose to live by democracy. Well, democracy is just such a it's it's a treasure that we have in Canada that not everybody across the world has the has the the right to democracy. A lot of people um, I know that sometimes in Canada, we may not like what's happening with the government. And that's fair. I mean, we're in a multi party system where if especially another party is governing, you may not always agree with them, but democracy is still democracy. And I, I, I think that you're right at uh, continuing to uphold democracy is so, oh, so important, especially in Canada. So if I may, if I may yeah. just, just on that, because that is essentially the essence behind my run. Uh, Vincenzo, I think that there's been an unprecedented erosion of Canada's democracy. More than 3 million Canadians cannot board a plane or a train. Their mobility rights are uh, usurped. Canadians are forced to choose, some Canadians are forced to choose between their personal health and their ability to put food on the table. We're seeing unprecedented censorship by the federal government. Uh, we're seeing the seizing of bank accounts without a court order or a trial. Uh, we have Quebec Bill 21, which prevents Canadians from practicing their faith when it's not grounded in a bona fide requirement. I'm running to restore Canada's democracy because without democracy, we don't have anything. You mentioned Bill 21. So I think that's really important. You would repeal Bill 21. Would you repeal Bill 21 in Quebec? And what else do you think you would do to sort of tell Quebec that the Conservative Party is a party for them, including... So as the federal government, as a federal government, you're unable to repeal provincial legislation. I would, however, intervene in the charter case against... Quebec, and I would look for other ways to discourage Quebec from engaging in what I believe to be discrimination against Canadians. I do not believe that uh, one should be precluded from teaching high school math because they were a keeper, or that uh, a person who is Sikh should be prevented from being a police officer in Montreal because they were a turban. Uh, we have uh, always uh, been proud, and I've always admired, Canada's multiculturalism, Canada's pluralism and, and uh, diversity, I believe that it is our strength. And um, if there is a legitimate occupational requirement such as safety, um, then that is one thing, but um, preventing uh, Canadians from uh, exercising faith as a condition of employment is not something that should be uh, accepted in Canada's democratic society. Definitely. And I mean, uh, I think that's something that's important. I mean, uh, Bill 21 is definitely not okay. We've been seeing it uh, brought to the forefront in recent months in Quebec. There were, have been some instances. And uh, I think that, well, if we're going to be on a country, a country that believes in religious freedom and a country that welcomes people from all backgrounds, because Canada is unique, because we aren't just a melting pot. We're actually a, a country that welcomes so many unique backgrounds to Canada. We need to do what we can to, to make that well-rounded for everybody. So we're going to, yeah. You know, you know Vincenzo, I'm, I'm a, at some point I was a new Canadian. I'm an immigrant to Canada. Uh, I came to Canada when I was 15 uh, at the, to the very uh, electoral district that I now represent. And which I'm in which I'm located right now. Uh, I am exhibit A for Canadian opportunity in that I've had every opportunity to succeed, to work, to join a small business and to be elected. And, and I think the most beautiful element in this is that we enjoy all these opportunities that are unfortunately being eroded right now, but we get to enjoy them while keeping our cultural and religious values. Uh, we get to be ourselves. And that is something that I want to preserve for all Canadians and future generations. Amazing. I mean, you, you have, you, like you said, you have that experience. You, you were an immigrant, you came to Canada and you're an MPP now. So it's, it just shows the, the diversity we have in Canada. So we're going to move on to policy right now, a bit of policy, uh, one of the only policy questions uh, in terms of um, structured question right now. And this comes from Evan in Ottawa and it, it's concerning the climate crisis and uh, climate change. So Evan wants to ask, what type of climate change policy do you think that the CPC should adopt if you become leader? I know this is a big question that's kind of going around and everybody has their own ideas about it. What policy do you think we should adopt should you become leader? Look, I think that no doubt humans have an effect on nature, but I don't believe that taxing 
uh, Sally $10 at the gas pump or making everything more expensive is going to reduce global temperatures. Um, I'm mostly concerned with clean water, uh, clean air, uh, clean forest. I love Canada's nature. And um, I don't believe that a carbon tax uh, will have a material effect on, um, on global temperatures or the climate. We see right now with the Trudeau Liberals that they think that a tax is going to solve everything. And obviously, as conservatives, we, uh, we see that that's not really working. It's only damaging hardworking Canadians and hurting hardworking Canadians. And say you even want to go out and buy an electric car, this, there's not even a big supply yet. I mean, hopefully Canada uh, has more of a supply of electric cars homegrown in Canada. But um, what type of, do you think, alternatives do you think you could, you would bring forward for instead of a tax? Like, name one. Uh, do you have an, uh, what type of alternative do you think you should bring forward instead of a tax? Well, we can be thinking about encouraging Canadians uh, to move to electric. It's, it's something that um, I'm definitely in favor of. We can have more, more conversations about compost. That's something that folks are talking about and technological innovations. Look, I think Canada is a good global citizen. We're responsible for just over 1%, maybe 1.5% of global emissions. I'd rather see us develop uh, our own oil and gas resources than any other rogue state. And it will be better for the planet too because uh, Canadians can do it safer and uh, cleaner than any other nation in the world. Definitely. And I think that also, well, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this, but uh, we need to be looking towards a future without oil and gas. But in the meantime, we can't just cut it off right away. So looking to clean Canadian oil and gas in the meantime is probably the best alternative. Well, the best uh, method right now. So we're going to be moving on to advice for the next generation where we talk about young and youth involvement in politics more. So what uh, should young high school conservatives do in order to get more politically active and one piece of advice that you would like to give them? Do not underestimate your ability to affect a change. That is something that maybe young people uh, are not sure about and, and many Canadians are not sure about. But I've seen firsthand how everyday uh, Canadians and, and young Canadians make a remarkable difference in the political system. Uh, getting involved in your local writing association, getting involved in a leadership campaign, uh, whether it's my own or anyone else's, uh, is a great way to get going. Uh, you, you pick up a lot of skills, you get to uh, learn how the process works, and just exposure to the process immediately opens up uh, opportunity and, and new interests. So I would encourage to continue uh, down the path of, of exploring your political interests and becoming active in the political process. Well, that's exactly it. Just getting involved in campaigns and whatever, whatever strikes your interest and sort of just sort of looking at policy, examining policy and um, just paying attention and just speak up and I'm sure that's something that you really believe in. We've talked about that today. So just speak up for what you believe in. So thank you, Roman, so much for your time today. We really appreciate you being with us and we wish you well in your leadership campaign. Good luck on that. So thanks. That's it. We hope you enjoyed today's interview. Look for more videos coming soon. Follow Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Ontario Just Cons for more info about our next interview and for more great content. Make sure to look at our website at ontariojustconservatives.org to see more about us, uh, see our projects, and for more great content. YouTube viewers like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel and click notification bell so you don't miss a video. Podcast listeners, follow us and stay updated with new episodes. So we hope to see you all soon. Thank you.